Okay, so relax, Packers fans. Relax, relax, relax. I know you wanted a wide receiver. I know Terrence Marshall's still on the board. You're probably saying, hey, we can get a wide receiver. Actually, I don't think all Packers fans wanted a wide receiver. Some are probably happy about this pick. Eric Stokes, I think, is really good. And you look at, let's just be real for a second. If Eric Stokes is on the roster in the NFC Championship game, he doesn't give up that long touchdown to Scotty Miller because of his speed. So there's some things you can't teach. One of those is, I mean, he runs, uh, he ran a 4-2-5 at his pro day, which it's probably, you know, there's a video, but it's probably doctored a little bit. I wouldn't be shocked if it's like a 4-3, but it's definitely 4-3. He has legit 4-3 speed, uh, and you can't teach that, and that's the thing that translates the best in the NFL. But anyways, let's just jump into the film study and talk about what I like about him and why I think this is a great move for the Packers in a position of need. So let's start things off with this play, because the main thing I keep hearing about Stokes is that, well, he can get beat with footwork, and he doesn't have the best hips, and I don't even totally disagree with those things. Like, I don't totally disagree at all actually that I, I agree he doesn't have the best hips that's a real thing on this play you are going to see that on this it's a cover one blitz but really the reason why I'm bringing up this play and the reason why I want to talk about the hips versus speed argument is that if you just look I, I made a whole video on this if you look at just the 40 yard dash times don't look at because you know those people say well those aren't always perfect some people are better at running on the field than running you know in shorts sure but you look at the 40-yard dash times, and the reality of the situation is that's the best indicator of who's going to be a good corner, even better than when they were selected. So speed is something that is heavily, even though it's valued highly for corners, it's still undervalued, which I think is, is interesting to me. But I think this play will be a good example of showing why it's undervalued, because he is going to get beat with footwork right here. Watch, right when this play starts, really good move by the Arkansas player. I can't really hate on him too much, and... Honestly, this is probably a catch if it's not for this kind of weird situation that's happening where there's just two... It looked like it might have been a, supposed to be a pick play of some kind, perhaps, but someone didn't run the right route, which now means that, you know, a little bit of a break for Stokes. So I'm prefacing it with that, which is if this doesn't happen, Stokes, you know, he has, he's fast enough, he would make a quick tackle. But that's kind of my whole point is that on this play, this is kind of the worst case scenario for Stokes and it's probably like a five-yard gain. That's kind of my whole point and my whole reasoning is if you don't have the best footwork, you'll give up some slant routes. If you don't have the best speed, you'll give up 50-yard bombs. So that's why I think it's you should probably be more willing to draft a fast player like Stokes. And we can get more into that in a second. But for this play, there's actually a an extra little thing that I think that we should talk about with Stokes, which is he has great awareness. He's always just aware of what's going on. He knows where to go and where to step into. So yes, he got a little beat here with good footwork, which by the way, there's not a single corner in the NFL that doesn't get beat with footwork every single game. It just happens. What I like about Stokes is he has the awareness to know where the ball is going now. Not just that, but he's going to have the burst to get in that area and try and jump in front of this route. Watch him step in front and he gets that interception right there. So uh, does that throw still go there if you know, if there wasn't that kind of weird thing, I don't know it, but still, I don't think it's that, that crazy to assume that he would have found a way to knock the ball away just because again, awareness and speed, he can get to someplace quick enough and he does have a good burst, even though people talk about his footwork. Yeah. It might not be the best East and West, but when it comes to him, just you know, jumping forward, he can do that with the best of them. So like, let's talk about this play now. This is a great, again, I'm talking about speed a lot. His speed is really impressive. This is a go route towards the sideline, which is that kind of thing I'm talking about. If you're a slow corner and you're in this situation in the NFL, you might get beat over the top and that would be a, you know, a 66 yard touchdown, which would not be ideal. However, for Stokes, he's not, you don't really have to worry about that too much because he does have the speed. Watch how right when this play starts, so, you know, no contact at the line, there's a clean release, he's just going to try and run with the Tennessee receiver, which I think is smart, like, I think that's fine, because watch how he just stays with him, and, you know, he didn't get his head turned around, he didn't knock the ball away, but that would have taken a perfect throw and a perfect catch, which even in the NFL doesn't happen all the time. It will occasionally happen, but it is rare. And in fact, in my opinion, in today's NFL, where the rules are so heavily skewed towards wide receivers and towards offensive players, there is no shutdown corner. The best a corner can do is just make the other team have to make a perfect throw and perfect catch. And that's what Stokes did on that play. And now I want to talk about this one because 
yes, okay, a lot of people say, yeah, sure, great speed, great straight line speed, won't get beat on go routes, but what about stuff like this? Because there's other ways to beat a corner. If you maybe fake as though you're running a go route, Stokes likes defending go routes, so he might be a little bit anxious in getting over there, and then you can just, you know, cut, whether it's cutting over the middle or just running a curl route or something, uh, comeback route, anything like that, and get open that way. And like, watch as you see, so again, Stokes doing what he did last time, bailing early, and just going to try and run with the receiver, which is something that, you know, he was very successful at last time. But when there's that stop, watch how he really stays with him. And yeah, maybe if you throw it at the perfect time and you throw it before your receiver is open, you could kind of have timed that perfectly. But honestly, that's dangerous because if your receiver isn't necessarily on the same page, if your quarterback, you know, throws it a yard too late or something like that, that's how interceptions happen. Quite frankly, that's how pick sixes happen. So you're not really going to do that. So really, he's not going to get beat that way either, I don't think. And like something like this, where again, similar situation, this time he's not on the outside, but it's still, he's going to be defending a go route towards the sideline with only a single safety deep, which, you know, by the way, you know, Tyson Campbell's another receipt, who was another corner with Georgia. There's a reason why they ran a lot of single safety deep coverages. It's because they had two corners who could defend that. But anyways, watch how right when this play starts, again, same thing, the clean release, Stokes is now running behind. But watch how he's able to sort of get his head turned around. This isn't really how you'd want to see it, where he's getting his head turned around towards his left instead of towards his right. But he still does read the play, which is, you know, it's not easy to do. And it's a little bit of an underthrown ball. But guess what? That's going to happen in the NFL. If you throw the ball 50 yards down the field, even the best deep ball throwers miss pretty consistently. They don't make it every single time. They probably make it about half the time and not even half the time, a perfect throw, that's actually very rare. Usually there's going to be a bit of a missed throw somewhere down the field, and that's what you can take advantage of. And as you see, he knocks it away. So yeah, I think there's a lot to like about Eric Stokes' game. One thing I, I've heard a lot of people talk about is, well, a lot of his interceptions were from that first play I showed you, you know, plays like that, where he kind of is in the right place at the right time. To me, I say, well, he's aware enough to put himself in the right place at the right time. He is someone who is going to get turnovers. I don't really care about stats in college. Uh, I never have, cause just because there's no, there's no clear evidence that that matters in terms of becoming a good NFL player. But watching his tape, you can tell he's someone who can, you know, get turnovers. He's not going to get burned deep. He is kind of that money ball player where he'll make big plays for you and he won't give up big plays, uh, you know, on defense so having a guy like that I think he's really underrated I think he's a really good corner and is getting slept on too much that's my opinion what do you guys think let me know in the comments below what are your thoughts on Eric Stokes's game always love hearing from you and of course as always thanks for watching